Creating a podcast editing and production template in your digital audio workstation can save you a huge amount of time over the life of your podcast. And today I'm going to show you how to set up a template in Audacity to do just that. We're going to have a look at the settings and set up the tracks in a way that's going to help speed up the process. And I'm going to show you some default plugin settings that you can get started with that will help you during the mixing stage as well. So this is the screen you'll be greeted with when you open up Audacity. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at the settings. So if you go into Edit Preferences, just make sure everything's set up right. So if you click on Devices, and the first thing to do is just make sure that your playback device is set correctly. So whatever your uh, speakers are plugged into, whether that's your laptop, then it'll be your built-in speakers, or if you have an audio interface, you should see the, the brand of your audio interface there. So I'm using a Focusrite interface. Let's click on that one. I'm using MME as the host. It's the most modern of these three options that you'll find if you're using Windows. If you're having trouble with any of them, if any are giving you latency, pops and clicks and, and things, you can try either of the other two, but I, I tend not to have any issues with MME. And then for recording, if you're recording your own podcast, then again, make sure your, your audio interface is set up and then this is set to mono, unless there are two of you recording in the same room with two microphones. If you set it to stereo, then that will allow you to record the two mics as though they're stereo. So one will be the left channel, one will be the right channel. Now, if you go into quality as well, set the sample rate, the default sample rate to 44100 and the sample format to 24 bit. These give the best quality to file size ratio. Any more is just excessive for a podcast recording. So click OK. And now we're going to set up our track. So if you go into tracks and click add new, then we want a mono track. That's for our host vocal and another one for our guest vocal. Obviously, if you're doing a solo podcast, you only need one of those. And then if you're recording an intro and outro, you can create two more tracks. Um, but if you've got your intro and outro sorted already, you can just drag those in and it's going to create two tracks. If they're stereo, it'll create stereo tracks and mono will create mono tracks, making it a bit easier for you. And then what I'm going to do is just zoom out and shift this over to roughly where your podcast episode might finish. So if you do half an hour episodes, then just drag it over to there to 30 minutes. One other thing you can do just to help navigate things more and to differentiate things, you can set your intro and outro. Well, if we name those as well, intro, outro, you can also set the colors. So if you click on the drop down again, go to wave color and choose one of these, it's going to change the color. This doesn't affect the audio at all. It's just going to differentiate it. So when we bring in our, our dialogue recording, they're still going to be blue. Um, it just, when you've got this kind of sea of blue on the screen, it just helps divide things up. Next up, you want to go to tracks and click sync lock tracks on. What this does is when you change something on one of the tracks, like when you delete a piece of audio, for example, if I click just to highlight that and press delete, it affects all of the tracks. Now, the reason why you want this turned on is because if you have a host and a guest vocal and you just make a delete on one of them, it's going to move them out of sync. So you want those synced, but you might not want it to affect your intro and outro tracks as well. So what you can do is if you go back into tracks, add new label track and put that as a divider, just click on the drop down, click move up as a divider between your dialogue and your intro and outro, it it no lo it, it blocks it off, so it no longer affects your intro and outro. I'll go into this in more detail, how to edit in some other videos that I'll link in the description below. And then one other setting relating to the editing, if you go to edit and preferences again, and go to tracks behavior, editing a clip can move other clips. You may or may not want this on, I'll leave it on it does help save time during editing. Next, we'll be taking a look at some of the effects that you can apply 
to your recordings. I'm just going to give you an idea of how to set up a generic template for EQ and compression that work as a starting point for any podcast recording. But before we do that, I just want to give you access to the podcast production process cheat sheet. It's a free PDF download that goes through the full production process that you need to go through for each episode. It works as a great reference alongside what you're learning here to check for each episode that you edit so you don't forget any of the essential steps. And you can grab it for free if you go to claricast.com forward slash PPP link below. So by default, Audacity doesn't have any real time plugins that you can just sort of set as I've shown on other, other template guides. You, you can set real time plugins and set them up here. But if you don't have any third party plugins that you've paid for, you won't have access to this. So just so that it's suitable for everyone watching, we're just going to use the default effects that come with Audacity. So if you go into effects, well, highlight a piece of piece of audio or just a piece of the track and go into effect and click audacity the first one we're going to add is a filter curve eq so if you're not familiar an eq is sort of like a clever volume knob which allows you to increase or decrease certain points in the frequency spectrum so give it a bass boost or cut or boost the trebles or mids and so on and this is going to help to make things sound more pleasing, more professional and more balanced. I'm going to show you a four step EQ setup that I use as a base, as a starting point for any podcast. And obviously listening to your podcast episodes, you're going to have to make some tweaks to this. And again, I'll leave links in the description to videos that go over how to EQ vocals. But I'm just going to show you a basic setup that you can save to start things off. So the first band we're going to use is a high pass filter. So if you click and add a point around 80 hertz, which is around there, and then another one so that we're completely cutting off everything below around 80 hertz. This is just the low end sub bass and some of the bass, the kind of rumbly uh, bass that you don't need in a podcast recording in a podcast production. Now we're going to add a little boost in the upper bass area around 80 to 150 hertz or so. Again, you're going to have to tweak this for each episode. You can just add these points and make sure you're not shifting this out because if this is below that, that thick black line in the middle, it means all of the high frequency is going to be reduced. So just keep that in the middle and then make a little curve. A little boost around here normally helps podcast sound, podcast recordings sound a bit warmer and more intimate. And then the third band is going to be at around 300 to 500 hertz. Be closer to the 500 mark. The reason why we add this one Let's set it around minus 6 dB. That's the second line. The reason why I find this useful in almost all podcast recordings is that with podcast recordings in particular that haven't been recorded in a professional studio, you get a lot of reverb and kind of boxiness. And it normally sits around the low mids here. So in most podcast productions, I'm going to be cutting some around here. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit of top end at around four to seven kilohertz, just to help brighten things up a bit. Again, it's gonna depend on your recording. If the recording's sounding really dull, then this is gonna help. If it sounds really bright and tinny, you might just wanna drag this down instead and reduce some of those, some of those high frequencies, especially if there's a lot of sibilance, a lot of S sounds that, that sound really harsh. And then what you can do once you set up this in roughly the same way, you can click on presets and settings, save preset, and we can just call it podcast vocal. But this isn't going to affect your audio until you apply it. So when it comes to bringing your podcast audio in, you can highlight a section of the audio, load up your preset there and click preview. And if it sounds better, you can click apply. If it sounds like it still needs some more work, like it needs more bass or or less, then you can take that, that little boost off and so on. Just tweak it and then click apply. Now we're going to look at the compressor. I'm going to highlight another section there and open up 
the compressor. What a compressor does is also sort of another clever volume knob. It decreases the level of signal once it goes over a certain threshold, meaning that you can reduce the level of the loud words or laughs or shouts or anything like that and it doesn't affect the quieter ones, meaning that you get a nice balanced level across the board. Now, to be honest, the, the default settings work pretty well with vocals. Ratio of three to one is fine. More ratio is gonna do more gain reduction. The threshold is what you're gonna to have to adjust mostly when it comes to actually working on your audio. When you highlight a piece of audio, you can highlight a section that has quieter bits and louder bits and then click preview. If it's only reducing the level of the, hot, the louder bits, then you know you've got your threshold in the right place. And then you can save that as a preset again. Podcast compression. And if you're recording your episodes in a similar way each time, then you can normally use these settings and you won't have to tweak things too much. One other thing you might want to make use of this label track, while well, we've got it there, you might want to mark a little label where where your episode is supposed to come in. So if you click on the label track where your episode normally comes in and press Control or Command B, it adds a label there. It just helps with navigation. When you just drag your episodes in, you can just drag them right to this point to make things easier for you. And there you have it. So that's your podcast template set up. Now what you can do is you can click Save and save project. Now Audacity at the moment doesn't have a way of saving a template and loading a template, but if you just save it as a project and just save it in a template folder, for example, then every new episode that you do, you can just load up this instead of creating a new session, you can load this up as a template and then just make sure you're clicking save project as when you save each episode, otherwise it's gonna save over your template. When you export your episode as well, if you go to export and as it's a podcast, we'd be exporting as MP3. I'm just going to click save to show you. It comes up with these metadata tags, your ID3 tags. Now, if you put in your the name of your podcast and the name of the artist and so on, you can save this as a template as well. And what that means is that you don't have to type all these details in every time you export your mp3 file. So now you have a template saved. Obviously, depending on your podcast, there might be certain other things, certain tweaks that you'll need to make. Let me know in the comments section below what your template looks like, if you made any, any changes to the template that I've shown you here. And as I mentioned, I go into editing, mixing and mastering of podcasts in that podcast production process cheat sheet and also in other videos which I've linked below. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.